Amen. All right, I want to focus on those three words in verse number 30. That's the title of the sermon this evening. The Bible says, favor is deceitful. The title of the sermon this evening is Favor is Deceitful. First, I want to begin by dissecting those three words. I want to get definitions for these words. I want to understand. I want everyone to understand first what exactly that statement means. And then I'm going to give you a few different ways in which favor is deceitful. Now, the first word, favor, is not a word that we use very commonly. When it's used now in our modern vernacular, like a lot of the words, you know, you'll drop one letter. Kind of like the word music. There's a K on the end of the word music in the King James Bible. There's a lot of words like that. But you'll just drop the U off of that word. And our modern spelling is just F-A-V-O-R. That's how you spell the word favor in modern English today. But it has the same meaning. It's just not very commonly used today. We don't use it very often. You'll hear it every once in a while, but not in this exact way. Right here, the word favor is more so being used like popularity. It's talking about someone liking you, right? It's talking about being liked by people. It's talking about being favored or being popular. So what that would be today in our modern vernacular, we would more so say that popular, popularity, if you will, in that particular uh, tense also. So favor there would be referring to like popularity, being liked by many people, just uh, getting the approval of many people. So basically what it's saying is popularity. And then it says is deceitful. Now what does it mean deceitful? What does the word deceitful mean? Well it means full of deceit. That's what the word deceitful means. It means it will lie to you. That it, it, it looks like something, but it doesn't end up out, uh, coming out and being exactly what it, how it's presented. You know, uh, you know uh, when, you, when you look at something like, you know, Satan is deceitful, right? Satan is a liar, and what Satan, he will come to you as, as an angel of light. So he looks one way, and you're expecting one thing from him, but once he comes and he gets there, and then you see the end of things, it's something totally different. Well, favor looks appealing, Favor and popularity look appealing. They seem appealing. It seems like it's something that you want. It's very enticing. But the Bible says that favor or popularity is deceitful. Favor is deceitful. Popularity is deceiving. It would be another way that we could word that. I want you to turn to Galatians chapter number 1. Keep your hand the, there in Proverbs chapter number 31. But I want you to go to Galatians chapter number 1. And I want to begin with <clears throat> giving you a, 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 a very good verse on how we should view life. How we should view the favor of man, the favor of God, popularity, being liked or favored. So I want you to look here with me at Galatians chapter 1. Look at verse number 10. The Bible says this, For, for do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? And then he says this, for if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. So notice that, that Paul here makes the statement, For do I now persuade men or God? Am I in my life, am I seeking to persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? Am I in my life and the things that I'm doing, the way that I'm living, am I seeking to please God? Is that what I'm trying to do? And then he says this, this is interesting, for if I yet pleased men, saying if I was trying to uh, please men with my life, I should not be the servant of Christ. You know what that means? That if you serve Christ, you're not going to please man. That's what that means. If you serve Christ, he's saying if, I wanted, if, if what I wanted to do with my life, if my objective in life was to be liked or to be uh, 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 found in favor by man, then I shouldn't be the servant of Christ. Saying that those two things, uh, uh, they, 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 don't, they don't come together. They don't go together. If you're going to be a servant of Christ, you're not going to be liked by the world. You know, Jesus made the statement that, Woe unto you when all men speak well of you. Amen. You know, uh, oftentimes those that are found in popularity or found in favor or liked by the majority, they're bad people. They're doing something wrong. If you look at the majority, if you look at the preachers that are loved by the masses or that are uplifted or found on mainstream television, most of the time they're preaching a lie. And that's how they got there. Most of the time they're not preaching the true gospel. They're just telling people what they want to hear and they're just tickling their ears. You know, but the exact opposite goes for serving Christ. And, and we need to understand that these two things are very different than one another. If we're going to be seeking to please God, we're not going to oftentimes be pleasing man. Therefore, if we want to have the favor of God, we're not going to have at the same time the favor of man. 
So what I'm preaching about, obviously, this evening is the favor of man and the popularity amongst men. And I want to talk about some of the ways in which popularity is deceitful and favor being deceitful. I want you to go back to Proverbs and look at Proverbs chapter number 31. The first way in which favor is deceitful is because almost all the time when people are found in favor or popular, it is based on one thing. The majority of the time it is based on their looks. And that is the only thing that it's based on. That's why there are two statements coupled together here. That's why it says this in verse number 30. Favor is deceitful. And then it says this. There's a conjunction. It's a part of the same statement. And beauty is vain. A lot of times when people are in favor or popular, the only reason is because of their looks. So it's very deceitful. It's not for who they actually are. It's not for who they are as a person. It's not for something that is meaningful and something that actually matters. It's for something that's very shallow. It's for something that's not that meaningful. It's for something that's very empty and really has no you know, a, a, a bearing on things of eternity. It's for something that is very hollow and shallow. That's why those two things are found together. I want you to go to Genesis chapter number 29, verse number 17. Genesis chapter number 29, verse number 17. That's why it says, Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. They're almost one and the same. Now there are exceptions. Some people, they, they may not be beautiful. They may not be pretty. They may not be handsome. But they may still be you know, found in favor. And there are some people that are popular or favored that aren't terrible people. So, of course, you know, uh, there are exceptions to all of these things. But most of the time, when someone is found in favor, it is because they're beautiful. And that is a very shallow reason. You know, if you, if you think of, you know, when people make a commitment to a partner for the rest of their life, when they're marrying their husband or they're marrying their wife, a lot of times, you know, uh, uh, you know you'll hear, you know, uh, stories about how someone maybe met someone when they were younger, they maybe met someone when they were in high school, and they based it upon their looks right away, right? Maybe they saw them and they were beautiful, and there's nothing wrong with that. Of course, you have to be attracted to that person. But you know what uh, causes that relationship to last? You know what actually uh, allows you to, to be able to grow and to, and to know one another and to stay together and to actually maintain that relationship is something that's much more meaningful. It's your personality. It's your virtues. It's actually who you are as a person. I want you to look with me at Genesis chapter number 29. Look at verse number 17. The Bible says this. Leah was tender-eyed. Watch this. But Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. So notice again, those two things are coupled together. She was beautiful and well-favored. Now when we examine the lives of Rachel and Leah... Of course, Rachel was the one that uh, Jacob desired, number one. He ended up getting Leah instead. The reason why he desired her was because of her looks. And it says that because of her looks, for her being beautiful, she was well favored. But when you look at Rachel and Leah as people, Rachel's the one that's bringing the problems all the time. Rachel's the one that is being a pain in his back or a pain in his neck, if you will, and fighting with Leah constantly. She's the one that's fretting Leah when Leah isn't able to have children. Rachel's the one that has the idol. She's the one that's keeping the idol. And then, of course, they, uh, the, when they come and they're searching for it, she, she had taken Laban's idol so she could worship it or, or, or do whatever with it. I don't know why you'd have it other than to worship it. So when we look at their character, we, look at, we examine both people, we see that Rachel's beautiful and she's well favored, she's popular, but we see Leah is tender-eyed, meaning you know, uh, it's a very hard statement, she must not have been very good looking at all, but it's referring to the fact that she's hard to look at, because your eyes are tender when you look at it, it hurts your eyes. That's what that's referring to, being tender-eyed. But you know what? She was a better person than Rachel was. She, and, and, and when Jacob ends up being buried, it's very interesting that it actually tells you that he's buried next to who? Leah and not Rachel. Isn't that interesting? Leah ends up living the longer life and being obviously blessed by the Lord. So when you look at the two people and we compare that with the virtuous woman, we can see that Leah lines up much closer to being that virtuous woman than Rachel does. And Rachel Ends up being that, that person you know, the, that, that has favor but is, but is uh, you know, beautiful. So we see those two things being coupled together again. Look at Genesis chapter number 39. We'll notice it a couple more times. And again, there's nothing wrong with being beautiful. There's nothing wrong with that. But oftentimes if you receive favor 
because you're beautiful or you receive favor because you're pretty. It's a deceitful favor. It's only based upon your looks and it's very shallow and it has nothing to do with who you really are as a person on the inside. All of Proverbs 31 is detailing all of the virtues. You know, uh, uh, this woman being a very virtuous woman, all the things that matter, and it talks about all these different things that this woman has that makes her a great woman. And then at the end it says, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. Look here at Genesis chapter number 39, look at verse number 6, it says this, And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught he had save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person, that's talking about him being handsome. And well favored. I want you to look at Genesis chapter number 41. Genesis chapter number 41. So over and over again, notice that the good looks or being beautiful is likened unto being favored. Genesis 41, chapter 41, verse number 2. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well favored kine and fat fleshed, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kine came up after them out of the river. Uh, ill-favored and lean flesh and stood by the other kind upon the brink of the river and the ill-favored and, and lean flesh kind did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kind. So Pharaoh awoke. I am not exactly sure why that is in here. I must be missing a verse or something. But uh, it had something to do with it referring to them being well favored. But another point about when we saw Joseph just a moment ago. Uh, uh, I want you to, uh, you, uh, if you recall that particular story, right before it tells you that he was a goodly person and well favored, uh, something takes place immediately after that. And that's when his, his, his master's wife tries to come and lie with him. Now, what would be the reason? Obviously, it mentioned, the reason, it mentioned that particularly about him being good, a goodly person and well-favored right before that for a purpose. She was obviously attracted to him. Now, let me ask you this question. Was she attracted to him for a good reason? Was she attracted to him because he was a... Does it seem like it's something wholesome and good and clean and righteous? Of course not. His favor in that type of situation was only based upon his looks... And we could see that the relationship that was even desired, just from his looks alone, was very wrong and shallow, wasn't it? So we can even see the favor that he was able to earn because of his looks was not good. And again, don't take this the wrong way and think that, you know, uh, uh, you know if you are a naturally you know, beautiful person, which I have nothing to worry about here. No, I'm just kidding. If you're a naturally good-looking person, that there's a problem, right? That's not at all what I'm saying. You know, you can be a an handsome and beautiful person, just naturally there's nothing you can do about that. You're just a handsome, beautiful person. But if that is what your favor is based upon, then it's meaningless. If that is what you are liked for, if you have a good relationship with a person and they only like you because you're good looking, that's a deceitful favor right there. And that's a favor that's not going to last. It's a shallow and vain favor. I want you to look with me now at, uh, I want you to go to Proverbs chapter number 12, verse number 2. The next reason <clears throat> that I want to go over is, uh, I'm going to read you again from Proverbs chapter number 31, one more time. Proverbs chapter number 31, and it's, it's I'm not preaching this, you know, uh, uh, just directed at women. This is for everyone. This is for all of us. Because everyone can get caught up into you know, seeking beauty and seeking favor. And very often times, people when they are seeking favor, what do they do? They try to beautify themselves, don't they? Because we subconsciously understand and know that, that, that beauty comes with favor. And uh, uh, often times, favor and the beauty that, that uh, uh, receives it can be superficial even. It's based on things that are very vain and, and, and meaningless. And I know that when I was growing up in school, the popular kids all wore certain clothes. They all had certain clothes. They had you know, certain brands that they wore. And they all would wear whatever the new brand was, American Eagle or whatever it was, right? Or Abercrombie. And they would all, you know, or the basketball players would all wear Nike and Jordan type things like that. And that was oftentimes the people that were popular. And, and to be popular, sometimes all you had to do was just change your clothing. That's all that you had to do. Sometimes all that you would have to do is just dress in a certain way. Or maybe just style your hair in a certain way. Or make sure that you put your hair in a certain way. So it kind of all falls back on being a goodly person as far as you know, uh, 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 being, being beautiful. And notice how superficial that is. And this can even come into play with you know, uh, hair products or makeup or any of these type of, types of things because it's superficial. 
There's nothing wrong with those types of things to a degree, but we shouldn't be doing those things to try to earn favor of, of, from man. We shouldn't be seeking favor. Why? Because, because it's deceitful. And in turn with that, beauty is vain. It ends up being something that's meaningless and, and has no real value. Um, furthermore, the favor of man is always temporary. The favor of man is always temporary. So number one, it's based on you just looks. Number two, it's based on things that are superficial. Things that are not really who you are. You know, you try to turn yourself into something that you're not and then you, people like you, but it's not even who you are as a person. You know, but number three, the favor of man is always temporary. It's always temporary. I want you to, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't have the verses recorded here, but I'm going to go through just some people in the Bible that uh, had temporary fame and then they lost it. And fickle is just wavering. It's something you have one day and then it's gone tomorrow. Think about David. Think about everybody turning on David with, when the, the situation with Absalom. And then all of a sudden you have Shimei throwing rocks at him. Everybody's running him off. Just prior to that, what were they saying? And, you know, uh, Saul hath killed his thousands, but David is ten thousands. Think about Saul. Saul was loved. Everybody loved Saul. They were ready to put the man to death that said that Saul shouldn't reign over him. Do you remember that? They're saying, who was the man that said that Saul shouldn't be our king? Let's put him to death. But then, just down the road, what ends up happening? Just later, so everybody's in love with Saul. Then David comes along. Saul has killed his thousands, but David is ten thousands. Now Saul's out the door. Nobody's interested in Saul anymore. You have Moses. Moses was the man of God. Everybody loved Moses. How many times did they just go back and forth where they just wanted to abandon Moses, wanted nothing to do with Moses? You know, who chose you to, to rule over us? How many times did that happen with Moses? People just going back and forth and him losing favor. Jesus. Think about Jesus. Now, Jesus, you may not understand this and remember this, or may not get the whole picture, but Jesus was famous. He talked about his fame spreading abroad. Now, of course, he had a lot of people that didn't like him, but he had a lot of people that liked him, too. And when he came in, in his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, they, you know, uh, they're, they're shouting, Hosanna to the king. I mean, they are loving him. He is in mass favor with everyone. And then literally days later, those same people are in a crowd shouting, crucify him, crucify him, days later. The favor of man is fickle. The favor of man, you'll be, you'll be liked and loved today. But just in a couple of days later, people will hate you and they will be you know, wanting to crucify you. This is how it happens. This, it's, it, you know, sometimes your, uh, just your relationships, just that you have a friend at school, might be, a, it might be what gives you popularity. You might just have a buddy that's a good basketball player or just a friend that's the star football player or maybe just a friend that's a friend of a friend that's popular and you get to get into the group that way. It, notice that it has nothing to do with who you are. Notice that, notice that it's all shallow, it's all vain, it's all meaningless, or it's based on your looks. They don't even know who you are as a person. You may not even have the things, same things in common. You may be saved and a believer in Christ, and they may not care about the Bible or like the Bible at all. It's all these things that are meaningless. You know why? Because the favor of man is deceitful. Oftentimes, the favor of man is deceitful. So we shouldn't be seeking the favor of man in our life. We should be seeking the favor of God. I want you to look with me at Proverbs chapter number 12. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter number 12. We're going to look at this verse and one other. We're going to be uh, ending a little earlier tonight. Proverbs chapter number 12. Look at me at verse number 2. A good man obtaineth favor of the Lord, but a, but a man of wicked devices will he condemn. I want you to go with me to Proverbs chapter number 29. So notice there, the type of man that receives or obtains favor of the Lord is a good man. So notice what God judges it on. He, he judges, judges it, excuse me, on something that matters. Something meaningful, meaningful. Something of your virtues. Of who you are as a person. How you live your life. It says a good man. Somebody who's actually a good person. A good man obtaineth favor of the Lord, but a man of wicked devices will he condemn. The Lord's favor is the only favor that really matters. The Lord's favor is the only favor... That will last. And in our lives, we need to be living our lives seeking the Lord's favor. 
and trying to, to be found in favor, be, to be liked by the Lord. We need to be seeking God's favor in our life. And, 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 and the, the, a major point for us to understand, we have to, un, we have to know and, and conclude that if we're seeking man's favor, you're not going to be seeking God's favor. Because they're, 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 they're polar opposites of one another. So you have to pick one. You have to either choose that you're going to live your life seeking man's favor and pleasing man, or you have to understand and choose that you're going to seek God's favor. God's favor is meaningful. It's based upon who you really are as a person. He actually loves you for who you are. It's not based upon just how you look, things that you can't even control. It's not based upon, you know, the clothes that you wear, what nationality you are, who you're friends with. You know, it's not based upon any of that. God actually bases His favor of you upon real things. Whether you're a good person or not. Whether you have virtues or not. Whether you're a good man. And the, the most important thing about God's favor is it's not fickle. It's a favor that lasts. It's not an unwavering fakel, uh, favor. Excuse me. Fakel. Yeah. It's not an unwavering favor. It's a favor that stays. Amen. It's a favor that once we're found in favor of God, God's going to continue to favor us. God's going to continue to love us and He's not going to turn His back. You know, the Bible tells us He'll never leave us nor forsake us. Look at Proverbs chapter number 29, verse number 6 and we'll end here. The Bible says, In the transgression of an evil man, this is not the right verse again. There is a snare. Does anybody see a verse that has the word favor in it? I can't remember exactly what it was. All right, well, you know, that's what we're going to conclude with on that point. We need to, is everybody searching for that verse real hard? <laughs> we, need to, we need to be seeking in our lives. 26? 29, 26? Okay, perfect. Brother Rick, you're a great man. You're a good man. You're in favor with me. 26, the Bible says, Many seek the ruler's favor. Notice that. That's a man. That's the prince. That's just a human. But every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. Now I want you to notice this. This is very interesting. Because it mentions the ruler's favor. That's a man, obviously. And many seek the ruler's favor, right? But then it tells you this. But every man's judge, but every man's, I'm sorry, every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. God's favor is the one that really matters. That almost caused me to completely forget my last point. God's favor is the one, is the, the only favor that really matters because God is the one who can truly judge us and then recompense us or pay us for what we have done. If we get in favor with man, he's never going to pay us back for that. You know, you know I'm not going to be able to pay you back for you know, everything you've done for me in a, in a real, true, meaningful way. But if you get into favor with God and you please God and you do the things that are pleasing unto Him and you spend your life serving Him and He's happy with you, your judgment comes from Him. Amen. So that's why you, 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 you should not waste your life serving. That's another reason why you should not waste your life serving man. Because that's what a lot of people do. And I want that statement to, to stick out in your mind. If you are spending your life seeking popularity or trying to be liked or trying to find man and you know uh, 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 women just to just to look at you and and to be accepted and and I understand that to a degree you know we all struggle with this of course but if you are seeking that in your life what you are doing ultimately in your life is you're just serving man it's just doing what he wants you to do in life that's what you're doing you're just trying to please man that's what you're doing. You're just spending your life just trying to please man. What you need to do is you need to spend your life and spend your time invested in pleasing the Lord. Amen. And trying to be found in favor of God. Because man's favor is deceitful. It's fickle. It's based on things that are shallow and are not meaningful. A lot of times, the friends that you had in high school and, and the relationships that you had, they probably didn't even really know who you were as a person. I know I can say that for some of the friends that I had. It wasn't just this close relationship for who we were really as people and we knew each other just, you know, uh, uh, in a very, uh, um, you, know, you know, intimate way, if you will, where we knew each other well. You know, and that wasn't the relationships I had oftentimes. 
You know, so it's, it's oftentimes very shallow. But if you spend your, your life serving God and seeking favor from the Lord, He's your true judge. And His favor is not fickle. And His favor is based upon something that's meaningful. And He will give you what you deserve for serving Him and for pleasing Him. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank You for Your Word. We thank You that You're faithful, dear God, and You will repay us for everything that we do and, and that You base it on things that, uh, uh, that we can help and things that are meaningful, whether or not we live a good and righteous life in Your eyes. We love You so much. We ask You that You be with us and everybody that's here tonight, dear Lord. Uh, be with our church, uh, that You would bless the food that we're about to partake in, uh, that You would bless all these children, dear Lord, that You'd help us to love Your Word even more each day, dear God, and just be with us and give us a, a sincere and, and, and a good heart uh, that we might just serve You. And in Jesus Christ's name, Amen.